Hello viewers, welcome to this next lecture uh, in this course on mathematical finance. We will begin a new module today and this will be the starting point of the major component of the course namely pricing of options. Recall that the price of an option is essentially the compensation uh, or the upfront premium that is paid by the buyer of the option to the owner of the option uh, or rather the seller of the option because the seller of the option takes up an obligatory position uh, with basically uh, no rights at all. So, uh, the key question that opens up is that what exactly is the appropriate or the correct compensation that actually needs to be paid by the buyer of the option and we will begin uh, the answer to this particular question uh, from today's class. Uh, in particular what we will look at is that we will first look at uh, a binomial model in a single time period for the asset price and then in particular we will look at uh, the strategy of replication in order to ascertain what this uh, important question, what is the answer to this particular important question namely the pricing of the option. So, we start this lecture and the topic is the binomial model and option pricing by replication. So, we begin with a one period binomial model and its consequent application in arbitrage pricing theory. So, we first begin with the discussion of the binomial model and we will look at the simplest case of the binomial model then namely the one for a single period. So, let the single period model have the initial time namely t is equal to 0 and the final or end of period time of t is equal to 1. Further, let the price of the stock at the time t is equal to 0 be denoted by S subscript 0 or S naught which of course is a uh, known it is a deterministic quantity. So, which is known deterministic quantity that means we know this when you are actually starting uh, the entire exercise. Now, what is the binomial model? See I am talking about a single period binomial model. So, I will first start off with what is the binomial model. So, in the binomial model as the name suggests the price of the stock or the underlying asset at time t is equal to 1 can have two values determined as follows. So, we do it in the following way. So, so essentially that we start off with this is a single period binomial model. So, at t equal to 0 
uh, you know what is the stock price and at t is equal to 1 uh, basically the stock price which will denote by s1 this will essentially have two possible values and these two values are basically uh, the two values that the random variable s1 takes at time t equal to 1. Now, uh, typically when you talk about a binomial model or a binomial distribution driven model, uh, you are always looking at a scenario where there are essentially two possible outcomes because it is a binomial model. And so, the easiest way to sort of generate the entire process is to look at the simplest uh, case of a binomial distribution or a binomial setup namely a coin tossing problem. So, what we will do is that we will take these two possible values of stock at time t equal to 1 uh, namely as subscript 1 as something that is actually being determined in a random fashion by the outcome of the toss of a coin. So, accordingly we toss a coin to model the two possible outcomes remember that we are just talking in the context of the binomial model. So, these two possible outcomes at time t equal to 1 namely head denoted by h and tail denoted by t. So, accordingly we denote the stock price price at time t equal to 1 by s 1 of h and s 1 of t such that s 1 of h is equal to u s naught and s 1 of t is equal to d s naught with u greater than 1 and d being less than 1. So, this means that I mean if you want to visualize this I start off with a, a value of the stock at time t equal to 0 as s naught which is the deterministic quantity and the binomial model then assumes that the price of the stock at time t equal to 1 is either going to be uh, s 1 of h or s 1 of t or more specifically in the context or uh, of s naught this will either go up to u s naught because I have taken u to be greater than 1 or it will go down to d s naught because I have taken d to be less than 1. So, this means that starting off with S0, uh, there are only two uh, possible price movements uh, at time t equal to 1. Either it will go up or it will go down. Whenever it goes up, we will denote the new price to be u of S0, where u is greater than 1. And whenever it goes down, we will denote it by d of S0, where d is less than 1. Now, uh, therefore, we can make the statement that s 1 of h uh, or s 1 of t it they denote the price when there is an upward price movement from or respectively a downward price movement from s naught to s 1 h is equal to u s naught or respectively s 1 of t is equal to d s naught. So, you have anyway we have seen this already graphically. Now, uh, further we assume that the probability of S1H 
happening is P and S 1 T happening is 1 minus P where P belongs to 0 1. All right. So, this essentially means if you go back to the diagram this means that the probability of movement from S 0 to S 1 of H this probability is P and moving downwards to S 1 of T which is D S naught this is going to be 1 minus P. So, this means that uh, the random variable S 1 uh, this random variable S 1 essentially takes two variables S 1 of H with probability P or it takes the value S 1 of T with probability 1 minus P. And here it is essential because we have taken P between 0 and 1 because if is your P becomes either 0 or equal to 1 that then basically the value of S 1 does not remain a random variable or does not remain uncertain anymore. Okay, now, we have this setup. Now, here we note that uh, this the P and 1 minus P these are what are known as real world probabilities. And uh, I just mentioned this here because at, uh, at a later stage uh, we will encounter a new probability measure uh, which will be called the risk neutral probability measures. Now, uh, clearly uh, since D is less than 1 and U is greater than 1. So, obviously, uh, D is strictly less than U uh, with D and U just to introduce the nomenclature with D and U being called the down and the up factor respectively. Okay. Now, finally, uh, there is one notation that we have to uh, introduce in this context. Uh, so, finally, we introduce R as the notation for risk free rate. So, what you can say is that uh, for the single period binomial model, for the single period uh, binomial model, the application of the no arbitrage uh, principle leads to 0 less than d uh, less than u and with uh, 1 plus r lying in between. Remember r is the risk free rate. So, they basically means that uh, if you invest an amount of a 0 uh, then at term some time uh, 1 uh, your amount will grow to a 0 into 1 plus r. So, this is what I mean by the risk free rate in this context. So, a simple no arbitrage argument uh, will lead you to uh, be able to prove that uh, not only is D strictly less than U, uh, but D actually D and U uh, actually uh, sandwich 1 plus R in between them in order to satisfy the no arbitrage condition. So, it is left as an exercise uh, for you to actually give an argument. It is a very simple argument uh, which can lead you to this proof and obviously, D has to be strictly greater than 0 uh, because uh, uh, D S naught is the stock one of the possible stock prices at time T is equal to 1 and you cannot have negative stock prices. So, that makes sure that you always need your D to be greater than 0. All right. So, now uh, while there is there is no real restriction on U and D uh, except the fact that uh, D should be strictly less than U and then uh, 1 plus R must lie strictly between D and U. Uh, however, in practice uh, we have u d is equal to 1 
And the reason behind this is something which is basically known as the uh, recombining tree and uh, this rationale uh, behind this assumption of u d is equal to 1 uh, will become uh, more obvious when we move from uh, the single period binomial model to the multi period binomial model. Uh, just to briefly mention is that uh, in case of a two period binomial model, you might have a, a upward and a downward movement. So, in which case if you start off with S naught, then the price after two time periods will be S naught into u into d which is S naught. Uh, and likewise a downward movement followed by an upward movement uh, would again give you S naught d u which is equal to S naught. So, you see that there are two possible different paths uh, which actually leads to the same possible value uh, of the asset at time t equal to 2 because you had assumed that d u d is going to be equal to 1. So, the more details of this will actually uh, be encountered when you are actually going and moving into the multi period binomial model. So, continuing our discussion with this uh, single period binomial model, uh, we now consider uh, the pricing of European options yes. and uh, we will also look at an example of uh, uh, European call option. So, uh, recall that uh, in case of a European call, uh, the owner has the right, but uh, not the obligation to buy the stock at expiration. Uh, remember, uh, say, you know, whatever t equal to one in this case uh, for the strike price of. So, we will denote the strike price to be equal to k. All right. Uh, so, here uh, we assume that that uh, the strike price that is decided upon this k is going to be uh, strictly less than s 1 of h which is the upper value of the price at time 1 and uh, greater than s 1 of t. Uh, remember s 1 of h was u s naught and S 1 of t was uh, d S naught. Now, what does this do? So, uh, this results in uh, two possibilities. Uh, so, let us examine these possibilities one by one. Okay. So, if tail t occurs then the option is not exercised, uh, which means that the payoff is 0, right? because if tail t occurs, uh, uh, then uh, essentially the, the, the price of the uh, uh, stock uh, that is available for uh, purchase in the market is going to be d s naught. Uh, which is strictly less than the strike price of k. So, uh, since the owner of the option has the right to buy the stock, but not the obligation. So, obviously, they are going to choose to buy it uh, if they want to at the price of d s naught, because it is lower uh, than the price k that is the uh, predetermined price they have to pay in case they decide to buy the stock by executing the call option. Now, secondly, if head H occurs, then the option is exercised and this gives a payoff of what? It will give you S 1 of H minus K, the difference between this price at which the owner of the op, uh, option can actually sell minus the, the price k they have paid for the option. So, combined as you have already seen as a combination uh, the payoff can be written is uh, as s 1 minus k plus or 
uh, this means this is maximum of S1 minus k comma 0, where uh, this random variable S1 can either be S1 of h or S1 of t. So, just to note that uh, as a random variable, we write S1 and drop the arguments h and t for the head and tail respectively. Okay, now, we come to the main uh, question of uh, the pricing of the option. So, we now carry out the option pricing uh, for a single period model so now uh, let so uh, obviously we have to introduce a, a whole bunch of notations here so we'll say that let v1 of h and v1 of t uh, be the amount uh, received or uh, basically the payoff for the holder of the derivative at time t is equal to 1 in case of head h or tail t respectively. So, just uh, recall that uh, the payoff uh, in case of European call, uh, a long position of European call or a long uh, it put R S1 minus K plus or K1 minus S plus. All right, now that we have the complete setup, uh, we now actually set the question that you want to address, and the question is the following Determine the price V naught. Uh, obviously, at time t equal to 0, uh, remember that the price of the option or the derivative uh, is a, a premium or a compensation that has to be paid uh, at the initial time t equal to 0 when both the parties actually get into this particular option arrangement. So, we determine the price v naught at time t equal to 0 uh, of the derivative security and this is the question that you are going to answer. Okay, so, how do we go about this? Suppose at t is equal to 0, we have an amount x naught. What is x naught will remain unspecified for the time being, it will become clear as we move along the discussion. So, at t equal to 0, we have an amount x naught. Now, how you are going to use this x naught? So, we are going to use this x naught in the following way. So, we use a part of this amount to buy delta naught shares of the stock at time t equal to 0. So, at time t equal to 0, so essentially what you have is that you have an amount of x naught and you are first of all what you will do is that you will use it to buy delta naught stocks. So, you will spend an amount of uh, delta naught s naught. So, what is going to be the balance? So, the balance is going to be equal to x naught minus delta naught s naught and what you do is the following that the balance 
So, what do we do with this balance? So, this balance x naught minus delta naught s naught is invested at rate r. Now, in case it turns out to be negative, that means the quantity x naught minus delta naught uh, s naught turns out to be negative, as you will see in an example later on. Uh, in that case, instead of investment, obviously, we have to borrow this amount of money uh, at the interest rate of r. Okay. So, now, once you have made this investment, so this means that at time t equal to 0, you have put delta naught s naught in stocks all right, and uh, x naught minus delta naught s naught at rate r. So, the question is, uh, what is going to happen to your investment at time t is equal to 1? What happens? So, now at time t equal to 1, what is going to be the value of this portfolio? What does your portfolio comprise of? Your portfolio comprise of delta naught number of stocks and this investment uh, at rate r. So, at time t equal to 1, your value of the portfolio is going to be x1. Now, you had purchased delta naught uh, shares of the stock at a value of s naught at time t equal to 0. Now, the value of each stock has moved from s naught to s 1, which is a random variable. Now, since you have purchased delta naught number of stocks, so that means the value of the delta naught number of stocks that you own at time t is equal to 1 is simply going to be delta naught into the price of the stock at time t equal to 1, namely s 1. Please keep in mind that this s 1 that you have here can take two possible values namely u of s naught and d of s naught. Okay, so, this means that this, this is going to be the current valuation of this initial investment and what is going to be the valuation of your investment x naught minus delta naught s naught. So, your investment of x naught minus delta naught s naught this will now grow by a factor of 1 plus r at the end of time t equal to 1. So, that means the total amount or, of, or the value of your portfolio at time t is equal to 1 is going to be the sum of these two. Okay, now, this can be rewritten as follows. I take this first term 1 plus r into uh, x naught, uh, separated out this particular term plus I will take the factor of delta naught as common multiplied by s 1 minus 1 plus r into s naught. Now, there is a very critical statement that I am actually going to make here. So, this important statement is the following is that the natural question is that if you start off with an amount of x naught, what should be the value of delta naught? Right? I mean, you have an open choice of delta naught and what would be an appropriate choice of delta naught and then uh, what should be your appropriate choice of x naught. Now, what is this driven by the choice of delta naught and x naught? It is driven by in such a manner. So, now let me try to actually give you the motivation of what exactly is happening here. The idea behind this is that you are basically the writer of an option and x naught is going to be uh, the compensation that you actually receive for the price of the option that you receive from the buyer of the option. Now, what you do is that you take that amount of x naught and you decide to invest in delta naught number of shares and the remaining money of x naught minus delta naught s naught is going to be invested at a risk free rate of r. Now, you have to choose your x naught and delta naught in such a manner that this particular investment strategy that you have adopted namely delta naught in shares and remaining as risk free rate should be such that at time t equal to 1, whatever is the value of the portfolio resulting from your investment that should give you enough money to give the payoff to the holder of the option. So, this means that whatever is the payoff uh, that you actually have to give to the owner of the option your amount of x1 must match exactly that, so that you do not suffer any particular loss. So, this is the first time you are intuitively looking at uh, the idea that being a writer of an option, 
does not always necessarily mean a loss because the price is designed in such a way that uh, with the price an investment can be made to exactly match the all the possible different values that you actually uh, have to give to the owner of the option namely all the possible values of payoffs. So, in this case there are just two possible values of payoffs because the payoff is dependent on the stock price at time t is equal to 1. So, accordingly the value of x i should be such at, at, the, at time t equal to 1 that it matches the value of the payoff. So, this is what is known as basically replication that you are essentially replicating in such a manner that in the event of a head or an upward movement of the stock price, the payoff will match exactly the value of the portfolio x1 and likewise if there is a tail or a downward movement on the stock, whatever be the payoff of the option at that time, again you will notice that the value of x1 of the portfolio exactly matches that. So, in both the scenarios your portfolio is designed in such a way that you are able to match and meet your obligations under the payoff. Remember uh, in case of uh, if the option is actually exercised say in case of a call option you can either give the stock uh, to the owner or equivalently you can just pass on the profit uh, that the owner of the option will get uh, by executing that particular option. So, in mathematical terms this means that uh, since there since x 1 is dependent on s 1 and s 1 has, has two values. So, it should be such that x 1 in the event s 1 becomes s 1 of h, x 1 must match v 1 of h and x 1 of t must match v 1 of t and this is what is known as replication that you are actually able to replicate v 1 of h or v 1 of t which is your obligation to the buyer of the option by making an appropriate choice of delta naught and x naught resulting in precise x 1 h and x 1 t and in other words x 1 will replicate v 1 and x 2 will v 1 of h and x 1 of t will replicate v 1 of t. Now, let us look at the two scenarios what is x 1 of h? x 1 of h is a scenario when a head has happened. So, this is going to be 1 plus r x naught plus delta naught into s 1 of h minus 1 plus r into s naught. And from the first condition here this is going to be equal to v 1 of h or equivalently we can write this as x naught plus delta naught s 1 of h divided by 1 plus r minus s naught is equal to v 1 of h divided by 1 plus r. I am just dividing both sides by 1 plus r. In case of x 1 of t you can in a similar way you can obtain x naught plus delta naught into s 1 of t divided by 1 plus r minus s naught is equal to v 1 of t divided by 1 plus r. So, let me call this equation 1 and call this equation 2. Okay. So, for uh, brevity or simplicity we multiply p tilde uh, we multiply actually equation uh, 1 by p tilde and we do not specify p tilde right now, but it will come back to it and 2 equation 2 by 1 minus p tilde uh, where. So, I will call this to be q tilde. So, where p tilde and uh, q tilde which is 1 minus p tilde are yet to be determined. Now, once we have done this we multiply this and adding. So, we multiply this by p tilde and this by uh, q tilde and add. So, what do we get? We will get uh, x naught into p tilde plus q tilde which is 1. So, we will get x naught plus delta naught uh, into 1 plus r 
and within bracket I will get P tilde into S1 of H plus Q tilde into S1 of T. And of course, minus uh, P tilde S0 plus Q tilde S0, this is going to be simply minus S0 and this is going to be 1 divided by 1 plus R into P tilde of V1 of H plus Q tilde of V1 of T. Now, what you can write is that I can write this as and this. Uh, so, what you can do now is uh, uh, now that you have this particular expression, uh, we can actually uh, address the question of uh, what is going to be my P tilde and Q tilde. So, what you can do is that we can choose uh, P tilde and Q tilde uh, such that this quantity here, this quantity essentially becomes equal to 0. So, then this becomes S naught is equal to, so if I choose uh, 1 divided by 1 plus R into P tilde S1 H plus Q tilde S1 of T, we choose this to be equal to S naught. Now, this is very convenient. Uh, so, let me clear, call this actually equation 3. So, this results in Uh, what? So, if you go back to the previous relation, uh, once I have this expression, uh, my choice of p tilde and q tilde, this expression here becomes equal to 0. So, only you have this and this expression which remain. So, this becomes x naught equal to 1 plus r into p tilde v 1 of h plus q tilde into v 1 of t. So, what do we get? We basically get that so, I will call this equation 4. Right? Now, uh, going back to equation 3, what do we do? In case of equation 3, we have uh, we have S naught. Now, I will replace Q tilde by 1 minus P tilde. So, S naught becomes uh, 1 divided by 1 plus R into P tilde S 1 of H plus 1 minus P tilde s 1 of t and this gives me s naught is equal to 1 over 1 plus r. Uh, remember what is s 1 of h? s 1 of h is nothing but uh, u of s naught and s 1 of t. So, 1 minus p tilde s 1 of t is going to be d of s naught. And so, what we get here is the following. So, this gives me s naught is equal to S naught divided by 1 plus R. I will take the common factor of S naught out and within bracket I have U minus D into P tilde plus D. So, now this S naught will cancel out. So, what you end up getting is, so this will give you 1 plus R is equal to U minus D P tilde plus D and this gives you P tilde is equal to 1 plus r minus d over u minus d. So, the p tilde and u tilde they have that you had introduced earlier uh, now uh, without actually specifying uh, can has now been actually determined uh, and this is turns out to be 1 plus r minus d divided by u minus d. Remember that u and d are just the model parameters because you have specified what your binomial model is. So, you already know what u and d are and uh, also you know what the risk free rate r is. So, you can actually uniquely determine uh, what your p tilde is uh, dependent on the model parameters which are known a priori. So, accordingly uh, you will get your q tilde which is 1 minus p tilde and this is going to be u minus of 1 plus r divided by u minus t. Okay, so, th th this resolves the issue of figuring out what is p tilde and q tilde. Then, what is going to be equal to you, what is going to be your delta naught? In this case, you can show that your delta naught is nothing but V1 of H minus V1 of T divided by S1 of H minus S1 of T. So, uh, this is what is known as the delta, and uh, we will see a lot of it uh, in the later part of the course. 
uh, and this uh, basically this is what is known as a delta hedging or a delta replication. So, this means what? This means that uh, if an investor, so we now what you are going to do is that we have uh, uh, recall that we have made uh, this replication strategy here and this replication strategy resulted in my equation number 3 and equation number 4. Uh, equation number 3 gave you the choice of uh, uh, p tilde and q tilde and using that we have asserted what is my p tilde and q tilde and consequently uh, I am able to evaluate what is going to be my uh, delta naught. So, this means that so I am now going to basically make use of this relation now that I know what is going to be my p tilde and uh, uh, q tilde that is known. So, therefore, if so now my x naught has been determined. So, if an investor begins with an amount x naught equal to so, I will just make use of relation 4 here. What was x naught? x naught is 1 divided by 1 plus r into p tilde v 1 h plus q tilde v 1 of t. So, if I make a choice of x naught according to equation 4, that is if I begin with x naught uh, is equal to 1 plus r into p tilde v 1 of h plus q tilde v 1 of t. Now, the interesting part here is that your r is a known quantity. Uh, your p tilde and q tilde you can figure out from the formulas here right and uh, v 1 h and v 1 t can easily be ascertained uh, by depending on uh, by ascertaining what is going to be the payoff. So, remember here uh, the v 1 h and v 1 t can is applicable uh, uh, irrespective of whether you are choosing a put or a call option. And uh, so, it is, it is actually a generalized setup uh, not specific just to European call option. And once you actually have, so that means that every quantity here on the right hand side of this particular expression, uh, every quantity here uh, actually is uh, can actually be determined and so you know exactly what is going to be your value of x naught. So, if the, so it says that if the investor begins with an amount x naught and buys delta naught shares of the stock, then the rest is invested uh, or borrowed uh, as I have already mentioned uh, if negative at rate r. And therefore, because of the way I have asserted my p tilde and q tilde, uh, therefore, they will have v 1 of h and v 1 of t at time t is equal to 1 if h and t show up respectively. So, then we can say that the investor uh, which we will see that in this case is actually the writer of the option. The investor then has hedged a short position in the derivative security. The derivative that pays v 1 at time t equal to 1 should accordingly priced as v 0 or v naught is equal to 1 divided by 1 plus r p tilde v 1 of h plus q tilde v 1 of t. All right. So, now what you can do is that uh, you know let us move from this abstract setup and try to see this through an example uh, and this is sometimes called hedging or sometimes this is what is known as uh, replication. 
And so this pricing should be done at as v naught at time t equal to 0. So we illustrate this through an example now. So suppose we consider a binomial model. What do you need in case of a binomial model, right? In, in case of a binomial model, recall that you, you have initial prices S0 and you can go up to US0 or come down to DS0. So we need the values of S0, U and D. So let uh, S0 be equal to 8, uh, D is equal to half and U is equal to and also we did the risk free rate, so let R be also equal to half. So what does this mean? This means that uh, your stock price S0 can either go up, so S0 is equal to 8 and it can either go up to U into S0 that is 2 into 8 which is equal to 16 or it can come down to uh, D S0 which is 8 into half uh, because D is half, so this is going to be equal to 4. So basically this means that S1 of H which is U S0 is 16 and S1 of T is equal to 4. So now we check two things. So further we also need the strike price. So uh, let us choose K being equal to 10. So let us check whether all the conditions are satisfied. So let us check the conditions. What are the conditions? The first condition was that uh, your S1 of t which is equal to 4 is strictly less than k which is 10 which is strictly less than S1 of h which is equal to 16. So S1 of t is strictly less than k strictly less than S1 of t so this is satisfied. Uh, the second condition we need to check that no arbitrage condition so that for that you need d less than uh, uh, 1 plus r. Uh, which is less than u. So, d is equal to half, 1 plus r is equal to 3 by 2 and u is equal to 2. So, this condition is satisfied. So, this is basically a legitimate binomial uh, asset pricing model setup. So, now let us calculate what is going to be my p tilde because I need to, uh, I need p tilde and q tilde to figure out what is going to be my v naught. So, P tilde recall that this was 1 plus R minus D divided by U minus D. What was 1 plus R? 1 plus R is 3 by 2 minus D which is half divided by U minus D which is 2 minus half. So, this is just 1 over 3 by 2 which is 2 by 3. Likewise, uh, Q tilde anyway is 1 minus P tilde, but let us just uh, go through the exercise. So, this was U minus 1 plus R divided by U minus D. Uh, what was U? U is 2, 2 minus 1 plus R which is 3 by 2 uh, divided by U minus D which is 2 minus half. So, this is nothing but half divided by 3 by 2 which is equal to 1 third. So, this shows that P tilde plus Q tilde is equal to 1. Okay. So, then my X naught should be equal to V naught which is 1 divided by 1 plus R. So, 1 divided by 1 plus R into P tilde into V1 of H plus Q tilde into V1 of T. Now, what is going to be V1 of H? V1 of H, so we are considering this example of a European call. So, V1 of H is simply going to be S1 of H minus K plus. What is S1 of H? S1 of H is 16. So, this is going to be 16 minus K which is 10 plus. So, this is going to be equal to 6 and likewise V1 of T what is this going to be? This is going to be S1 of t minus k plus. What is S1 of t? S1 of t is 4. So, this is going to be 4 minus 10 plus and this is going to be equal to 0. So, we substitute all the values here now and this becomes 1 divided by 1 plus half. Remember p tilde is 2 by 3, q tilde is 1 by 3, v1 of h is 6 and V1 of T is 0. So, what does this become? This becomes 
2 by 3 into 4 which is 8 by 3. So, this should be V naught and this must exactly be the same as X naught. So, V naught here basically means the value of the payoffs or the expected value discount of the payoffs from the European call option discounted back to the time t equal to 0 and this must exactly match the money that uh, the money V naught uh, uh, must exactly match X naught which is the money that the writer of the option needs in order to replicate or hedge against any potential losses. So, this means the following. Now, since uh, V naught is 8 by 3, so X naught is also 8 by 3. So, this means that the writer of the option receives X naught equal to 8 by 3. Now, this writer of the option now has to invest in delta naught stocks and rest at rate r. So, how do I determine? I have determined what is my x naught, this is going to be the same as v naught, but now I want to determine what is going to be my delta naught. Now, recollect that after solving, we had mentioned that this uh, delta naught is nothing but v1 minus vht over s1 h minus s1 of t. So, we will use this formula. So, in this case, then delta naught is going to be v1 h minus v1 t divided by s1 h minus s1 of t. v1 of h is 6 and v1 of t is 0. So, this is 6 minus 0 divided by uh, what is s1? s1 is 16 and uh, s1 h is 16 and s1 t is 4. So, this is going to be 16 minus 4 and this is simply going to be 6 by 12 or half. So, this means the strategy that the writer of the option takes is that first of all you buy delta naught equal to half shares or stocks by investing. Now, since the price of the stock is a uh, S naught. So, delta naught share will cause delta naught S naught which is half into 8 is equal to 4. And so, uh, what is going to be the balance? So, this balance will be you started off with 8 over 3 and you have invested an amount of 4 in the stock. So, this becomes minus 4 by 3. So, that means you have to borrow this. right? You had 8 over 3 which is less than the 4 that you need. So, you have to borrow an amount of 4 over 3. Now, this is something that I have is happening at time t equal to 0. Now, at time t is equal to 1, what happens? There are two possibilities. The first possibility is a head and the second possibility is a tail. So, then what is going to be this particular portfolio at that point? So, x1 of h is going to be, remember you had half shares. So, it is going to be half into s1 of h plus uh, this balance amount minus 4 by 3 into 1 plus r. Remember s1 of h is 16, so this becomes half into 16 and remember 1 plus r is 3 by 2, so this is minus 4 by 3 into 3 by 2, so this is nothing but 8 minus 2 which is 6. And remember that means, the value of the portfolio in case of an upper stock movement is going to be equal to 6 and in case of x1 of t that means, a downward stock movement this is going to be half into s1 of t plus this minus 4 by 3 into 1 plus r. Now, in case of s1 of t, s1 of t is 4. So, this is half into 4 minus 4 by 3 into 3 by 2 this is 2 minus 2 which is going to be equal to 0. So, you see that x1 of h is 6 which is the same as v1 of h. So, you have replicated v1 of h and similarly x2 of t is going to be 0 which is the same as v1 of t which is 0. So, this is v1 of t. 
So what does this mean? This means the following. It says the following that, so what is, let us look at the interpretation of this. The interpretation of this example is as follows that you start off with a stock S0 uh, the current prevailing price of the stock S, uh, is S0 which is 8. The binomial model is designed with u is equal to 2, d is equal to half and r is equal to half. So, suppose somebody wants to buy an option, then the price of the option is v naught which is 8 by 3 and this is same x naught. So, this means that the following that the writer of the option takes x naught and makes an investment. So, what happens is the following that in case there is a head, this investment with this amount x naught becomes equal to 6 and the payoff is also going to be equal to 6. So, this means that taking the price of the option x naught and investing by the appropriate choice of delta naught which is equal to half, the owner, the writer of the option ends up with the amount of 6 and this is exactly enough to match the payoff that they have to pay to the owner of the option. The owner of the option what they are going to do? So, what they are going to do is that they are going to get take this 6, all right? they are going to receive an amount of 10 from the owner of the option, they have this entire amount of 16 all right? and then they use this 16 to buy the stock at the prevailing price and give the stock to the owner or equivalently what they do is that they tell they have an amount of 6, they tell the owner of the stock as rather the owner of the option saying that look uh, you would normally pay me an amount of 10 for the stock which was the agreed strike price and now I know that you will immediately sell it in the market for 16 and you are interested in only the payment of 6. So, let us not go through this entire exercise since you are only interested in the 6. I am just going to hand over this amount of 6 which I have to you. So, that means the amount of 6 that they are obligated to pay is exactly matched because they made a correct choice of x naught which was 8 by 3 and a correct choice of delta naught which was equal to half. Now, on the other hand suppose the tail happens. In case of a tail what is going to happen? x 1 of t is equal to 0, but in case of a tail the strike price is 10 and the current pre market price is 4. So, the option will not be exercised and that means v 1 of uh, t is going to be equal to 0. I mean they will find that their value of the portfolio is 0, but they need not worry about it because clearly the other party uh, who are the owner of the option, they obviously are not going to exercise and so there is no liability. So, this means that given that right choice of x naught as given by this particular formula, this particular formula right choice of x naught and the right choice of uh, delta naught uh, th that we had as given by this particular formula has ended up ensuring that in both the scenarios of the stock price movement namely the up and the downward which you denote by head and tail, whatever amount they have 6 and 0 exactly matches the amount that they owe or they have to pay to the buyer of the option. And this is what is basically a typical example of replication. So, just to sum it up or uh, whatever we discuss is that we started off, uh, we essentially look today at a single period binomial model for asset prices. We started off with a known stock price S0 and the binomial model said that this value of S0, the future value of this, uh, of this stock at time t equal to 1 uh, is going to be equal to uh, u of S0 when there is an upward movement obviously u is greater than 1 and if there is a downward movement uh, it is going to be uh, uh, d of s naught and 
you, uh, you essentially uh, then can write an option on it and you can use the replication strategy to determine what is going to be the fair price of the option. And just to make one last point uh, that I had missed out on, uh, that point is that uh, remember we had made a choice of uh, P tilde uh, and Q tilde so that I chose my P tilde and Q tilde so that S0 is basically uh, 1 divided by 1 plus R into P tilde S1 of H plus Q tilde S1 of T. So, what you can do is that you can revisit this. So, just coming back one final observation that I want to make is S0 is 1 divided by 1 plus R into P tilde S1 of H plus Q tilde into S1 of T. So, basically this means that uh, here it is like S1 of H is a random variable, S1 of T is a random variable. If I take my P tilde and Q tilde to be probabilities which I can do at least you know uh, uh, intuitively because P tilde plus Q tilde equal to 1 you can view this as the expected value of S1 with probability P tilde Q tilde instead of P Q. And this is nothing but E of S1 divided by 1 plus R. So, what it is saying is basically that E of S1 is equal to S0 into 1 plus R. So, what it is saying that if you start off with investment of S0 at time t equal to 0, at time t equal to 1 it will grow to a factor of S0 into 1 plus R if this investment was risk free. But what you are seeing now is basically that S0 into 1 plus R is becoming the same as the expected price of the stock. So, this might give you an impression that the investment of a stock in is basically the same thing as an investment in a risk free asset. But please remember that this is equal to this expected value of the stock price at time t equal to 1 under the probabilities p tilde and q tilde and not under the original probabilities of p and q. So, normally E of S1 or if I call this a E tilde, E of S1 which is p into S1 of h plus q into S1 of t, this should typically be greater than S0 and this is what are known as the real world probabilities. And this since this choice of probabilities results in the expected value of S1 being the same as the value that you would get as a risk free investment that is the reason why P tilde and Q tilde are known as risk neutral probabilities. Whereas, in the real world since you are taking a risk this is S0 into 1 plus R you expect that your expected return on the investment in the stock should be more than what you would get in case of a risk free investment. So, more details of this will be taught uh, as we move along this discussion on option pricing. So, uh, this brings us to the end of today's class in the next lecture we will continue more uh, on uh, the replication strategy to determine the price of an option this time in case uh, where you go beyond the single period framework. Thank you for watching.